let's consider different types of ramps and let's think that a block is going down on these ramps under the effect of the gravity and the friction force. Let's assume that we want the speed of the block to be constant. We can ask the following question. Knowing the desired speed and the kinetic coefficient of friction, which ramps will allow this constant speed motion on them? In this video, we will describe all possible ramps that have this property. Let's describe the linear ramps. These are all the forces acting on the block. In order to find the normal and the friction force, we decompose the gravity force and conclude that the magnitude of the normal force must be mg cosine of theta sub zero and the magnitude of the friction force must be mg mu cosine of theta sub zero. If we want constant speed, this equation must hold true. In particular, tangent of theta sub zero must be equal to mu. In the general case, in order to describe the ramp, we need to find a curve alpha given by two functions, x of s and y of s. Without loss of generality, we will assume that s is arc length parameter and therefore we can define a function theta using the velocity vector of the curve alpha. Using the function theta, we can define the normal vector field to the curve. It is easy to see that the second derivative of alpha can be written in terms of the function theta. Let us assume that beta of t describe the motion of the block. A direct computation shows that the acceleration of the block satisfies this equation. Using Newton's second law and taking a look at the free body diagram, we conclude that this equation must hold true. From this equation, we can find the length of the normal force lambda, and also we can find a differential equation for the function theta of s that can be solved by separation of variables. Once we explicitly have the function theta of s, we can find the curve that describes the ramp. This ramp must be a rotation of the curve with velocity vector hyperbolic tangent of a times s, comma hyperbolic secant of a times s. This is the graph of the easy to describe curve, and this is an easy parametrization. Recall that the block must move down. We can check that this rotated curve provides two ramps, one at each side of the maximum height. This is how the motion happens on the ramp to the left of the maximum height. We can see how Newton's second law holds true. In each one of these images, we are showing all the forces that act on the block and the acceleration vector. We are taking the mass to be one. Similarly, we have a sequence of images showing the motion on the ramp to the right of the maximum height. For ramps described by planar curves, the velocity vector lies on the bottom part of the circle. In the three-dimensional case, the tangent unit vector of a ramp lies on the south hemisphere. Besides having more freedom for these vectors, we have more freedom for the vectors that describe the normal of the ramp. We have that if we choose a unit normal vector for each possible unit tangent vector of the ramp, this is, if we pick a continuous tangent vector field on the south hemisphere, then there exists a family of ramps given by an ordinary differential equation. We therefore have the following. Every unit tangent vector field defined on the south hemisphere describes a family of ramps. We are seeing here some ramps coming from some particular choices of the unit tangent vector field.